ready now to fire in? Yes. Okay, drop her in there. Now that the shark has the idea, he gets his tuna on a plate. Keep it in the air anyway, because he's a bit cranky. Running tests on the great white sharks in the wild is always unpredictable. <laughs> the plate is designed to measure pounds of pressure per square inch. How are you boys? We're out of the uh, calibration range here. We'll have to recalibrate this. Did you get it? It is amazing. You know, we're looking at the test strip now and that looks as though that's... That's more than the... This one is 500 kilograms, 1,000 pounds. 1,000 pounds. That one's more than 1,000 pounds. A thousand pounds per square inch, enough to puncture metal plating. But what exactly is it that draws a great white and prompts it to bite? Is it the smell of prey, or the sight of it, or the vibrations it sends through the water? That's a crucial question for divers, so Rodney helped set up another experiment. What I hope to do here is to really work out whether the great white sharks are interested in humans, whether they can actually see that there is a, a shield, an unseen shield there, whether they can detect that, and whether they may be interested in the fish or sound, and whether just, just to see just what they are interested in. They swim around and around so many times the cages without biting, um, and we haven't had any true results. In order to test sight, Rodney will use a cage of quarter-inch Lexan plastic to give the sharks a clear view of his shape. An underwater speaker will test for sound, broadcasting low-frequency vibrations to simulate the vibrations made by moving prey. A thawed tuna will provide scent. Will the shark show any clear preference? Which one will attract them the most? The adrenaline that rushes in you as you go down there and as a shark comes in when you're in the Lexan tube gives you a real rush. It's excitement all over again. It's like the first time in my shark cages. It's exciting and uh, my heart you can feel it a little higher and you're beating a little faster as you realize that you are part of an experiment that the sharks don't really know whether they can get at you or not it was quite unnerving really because i felt like i was naked in the middle of a street in a shop window and with everything exposed <laughs> Again and again, the circling sharks pass Rodney by and return to the source of the sound vibration. The proof is clear. At close range, underwater vibrations, not sight or smell, are what attracts the shark. Rows of sensory cells along the shark's flank are especially attuned to these stimuli. Now, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind they were far more interested in the low vibrations oh, yeah. than they ever were in, in, in me. Yes. The more Rodney has studied them, the more he has come to learn about sharks. The great variety of sharks, all 370 species of them. 
I get lots of pleasure from looking at the different species of sharks, from the carpet shark that lays on the bottom with his frilly mouth. To the nurse sharks that seem to rummage around and sleep a lot. To the beautiful whaler sharks and the bull sharks and the silky sharks and the, there's so many, the mako sharks and the great white sharks. It's all of them have a different field, a different way to swim, a different way of life but they're all beautiful the way they, they swim and glide and fly through the water.